There's a 1 in 64 billion chance of two people sharing the same fingerprint. At least that's the number a 19th century scientist estimated without a computer or a global database. Today, with billions of prints on file, we're finding out he was dangerously wrong. Here's the truth. That statistic cemented the belief that fingerprints are perfect identifiers. Courts accepted them as hard evidence. Police forces across the world used them as the gold standard for solving crimes. But here's the catch. Galton's math wasn't based on massive data sets. It was based on assumptions and limited observations. He didn't actually compare billions of fingerprints he just estimated. Fast forward to the 21st century. With billions of people's prints stored in government databases, researchers discovered that fingerprints aren't as unique as we thought. In fact, partial fingerprints, the kind often lifted at crime scenes, can sometimes match multiple people. Welcome. In this video, we're going to look into the science, the myths, and the security implications of fingerprints. By the end of this video, you'll understand why trusting your fingerprint as the ultimate lock might be riskier than you think. This video will break down the flaws in the security you use every day. But if you're a business looking for a defense that goes beyond single points of failure, you can see how our AI agents analyze the bigger picture at tlaris.com. Now, let's get into the science. To understand this, let's break down the science. Fingerprints form in the womb between the 10th and 15th week of gestation. They're influenced by genetics, yes, but also by random environmental factors inside the womb. Think of things like the pressure of amniotic fluid, the baby's movements, or even the density of nutrients. All these tiny variables shape the ridges on your fingers. That's why identical twins who share the same DNA still don't have the same fingerprints. Their prints are similar, but never truly identical. While the overall pattern might be unique, like a whirl, a loop, or an arch, it's the detailed ridge endings and bifurcations that make up a fingerprint's minutia points. These are the specific features biometric systems compare. Here's the thing, modern fingerprint sensors don't scan your entire finger. They only capture a small portion. Your phone, for example, might only store a template of about 30 to 40 minutia points. That's enough for recognition, but not enough to be mathematically impossible to replicate. Think of it like a jigsaw puzzle. The full fingerprint is the whole puzzle, but your phone is only storing a few corner pieces. If another puzzle has similar corners, you could get a false match. While fingerprints may be unique in theory, the way we use them in practice leaves plenty of room for error. This brings us to the dirty little secret of biometrics, error rates. Every biometric system operates on a trade-off between two key metrics, the false match rate and the false non-match rate. The false match rate is the chance that the system will incorrectly match an imposter's fingerprint to your template. The false non-match rate is the chance that the system will reject your own legitimate fingerprint. If a manufacturer makes the system super secure to prevent any false matches, you'll get frustrated when your phone fails to recognize your thumb half the time. So, for consumer devices like phones, these systems are intentionally tuned for convenience, not for maximum security. They are designed to be more forgiving, which means they have a higher, albeit still small, tolerance for a potential false match. That convenience you love when your phone unlocks instantly is the very thing that makes it inherently less secure than a high security system at a government facility. Let's look at some real-world examples. In 2004, a man named Brandon Mayfield, an attorney from Oregon, was wrongfully accused of being involved in the Madrid train bombings. What was the reason? The FBI claimed his fingerprint matched one found at the crime scene, but it didn't. A partial print was lifted from a bag of detonators in Madrid. When the FBI ran it through their massive database, their system returned a list of 20 potential candidates, and Brandon Mayfield was one of them. What happened next is a powerful lesson in confirmation bias three separate, highly trained FBI fingerprint examiners, and then a fourth independent expert hired by Mayfield's own defense team, all declared that the print was a 100% positive match. Mayfield was arrested as a material witness and spent two weeks in jail, facing the possibility of the death penalty as an accused terrorist. He was only exonerated when Spanish authorities, who had disputed the FBI's match from the beginning, independently identified the print as belonging to an Algerian national. The FBI was forced to admit its error and issue a formal apology. The Mayfield case sent shockwaves through the forensic science community, proving that even with the best technology and the most trained experts, fingerprint evidence is not absolute. Mayfield was released, but not before his life was turned upside down. The US government even had to issue an apology and pay him compensation. This wasn't a one-off mistake. In several other cases, partial prints have led to wrongful arrests. The core problem is that prints are rarely lifted in perfect condition. They're smudged, incomplete, or distorted. 
And when algorithms try to match those imperfect prints against massive databases, mistakes are bound to happen. Even outside of law enforcement, researchers have demonstrated that it's possible to spoof fingerprints. In 2014, the hacking group Chaos Computer Club famously replicated a German politician's fingerprint using just high-resolution photos of his hand. They didn't even need his actual finger. That's right, your so-called unique password can be stolen. With a camera. Today, fingerprints are everywhere in security. We unlock our phones, secure our laptops, pass through airport gates, and even unlock our front doors. The logic is simple. Unlike a password, you can't forget your fingerprint. And unlike a key, it can't be stolen from your pocket. At least, that's what we thought. But here's the fundamental flaw. Fingerprints are not secret. You leave them on everything you touch. Your phone screen, a glass of water, a doorknob. Unlike a password, which you can keep private, your fingerprints are constantly exposed. Think about it. If someone wants to steal your password, they have to hack your account or trick you into giving it up. If someone wants your fingerprint, they just need to pick up a cup you drank from. That's exactly how researchers and hackers have replicated fingerprints using things like latex molds, 3D printing, or even simple household glue. And here's the most unsettling part. Once your fingerprint is compromised, you can't change it. If your password is hacked, you just reset it. But if your fingerprint template is stolen from a database, you're compromised forever. So what does all of this mean for security? First, it means we need to stop treating fingerprints as unbreakable locks. They are just one factor in security. Stronger systems use multi-factor authentication, something you know, like a password, something you have, like a phone, and something you are, like a fingerprint. Relying on just the last one is incredibly risky. Second, centralized fingerprint databases, like those used by governments for IDs, passports, or law enforcement, are prime targets for hackers. If a hacker breaches such a system, they don't just get your password, they get your permanent, unchangeable biometric identity. In 2015, the U.S. Office of Personnel Management was hacked and 5.6 million fingerprints were stolen. Just think about that. Millions of people can never fully trust their fingerprints for secure identification again. Third, the growing use of biometrics raises serious ethical concerns. If corporations and governments have permanent records of your fingerprints, what's stopping them from tracking you everywhere you go? The line between convenience and surveillance starts to blur. So, does this mean we should ditch fingerprints altogether? Not necessarily. They're still convenient and better than nothing in many cases, but they should never be used as the only layer of protection. Researchers are now exploring alternatives. There are iris and retina scans, which are harder to forge but still vulnerable to high-res photography. There's voice recognition, which can be spoofed with AI deepfakes. A more secure option might be vein pattern recognition, which scans the unique pattern of veins under your skin, making it much harder to replicate. Even more advanced is behavioral biometrics, analyzing how you type, swipe, or even walk. Behavioral biometrics is a game changer because it authenticates you not by a static physical trait, but by your unique patterns of behavior. Think about the rhythm of your typing, the speed and pressure of your swipes on a screen, the angle you typically hold your phone, or even the way you walk. These are thousands of tiny, unconscious data points that create a living, breathing profile of you. Unlike a fingerprint, this profile is dynamic and incredibly difficult for a hacker to replicate. The system doesn't just check who you are at the login screen. It can continuously verify that the person using the device is still you, second by second. If someone steals your unlocked phone and starts swiping differently than you normally do, the system could detect the anomaly and lock the device down. This shift from a single, static checkpoint to continuous, passive authentication is the future of keeping our devices secure. These are dynamic and far harder to copy. The future will likely be multimodal biometrics, combining multiple signals so that no single failure can compromise the entire system. So, what can you do right now to stay safe? It's simple. Don't rely on fingerprints alone. Always enable two-factor authentication wherever possible. Keep your devices updated, as security patches often fix biometric vulnerabilities. Use strong backup passwords. If your fingerprint fails, you'll fall back to your password or PIN. Be mindful of where your prints are stored. Some systems keep them locally on your device, while others upload them to a central server. Local storage is usually safer. And most importantly, stay informed. Security is a constantly evolving field, and what's safe today might not be safe tomorrow. Fingerprints are fascinating. They connect us to our biology, our history, and our identity. But they aren't the unbreakable locks we once believed. The truth is, no security system is flawless. And when it comes to convenience, there are always trade-offs. So the next time you unlock your phone with a fingerprint, remember this. You're not using a secret password. So the next time you unlock your phone with a fingerprint, remember, you're not using a secret password. You're using a public signature, one you leave behind everywhere you go. 
That's why at Telerus, we believe security needs to go beyond single points of failure, like fingerprints or passwords. Our AI-powered agents are designed to see the whole forest, not just the trees, so you can stay one step ahead of attackers. If you'd like to understand how this applies to your business, you can reach out to our experts for a personalized consultation, or even request a demo of our AI agent to see it in action. If you found this video eye-opening, hit the like button, subscribe, and share it with someone who still thinks fingerprints are foolproof.